Hello, it's Eric from Marsha Garden. I'm here in the abandoned olive orchard where I wanted to give you guys a proper introduction to Julian Rivera, who's gonna show us how to care for olive trees in a regenerative way. He will explain his approach to caring for the soil. I'm gonna divide the series into two parts. Uh, the first is his approach. The second part is where he will explain how to prune olive trees. He's done it in a way that I haven't seen so far really in depth and he's very knowledgeable about the, about the subject so i hope you enjoy and here he is here today with julian rivera right right and <laughs> we're in the abandoned olive lot that we're is now under our care he has many olive trees under his own care in severa that's right so can you tell me a bit about yourself yeah um as you said, I'm Julian, uh, so everybody knows, and um, I'm living here in Spain too, like you do. When did you come? I came when did in, you come? well, to Peniscola, I came in 2018. So we just uh, arrived here? But I've been here. here since 2010. Okay, so, but when you came to Peniscola, we just moved to Cervera, which is the village uh, in the mountains. We moved there after visiting uh, a friend. We liked it a lot. We decided to try to live there. And then I figured out after living there for a year that the best thing I could do is uh, agriculture. And there's lots of abandoned land. There's olive trees. Uh, that's what I have most of. There's also almond trees. I don't know if we can see one in the back. They are just yeah. uh, there's the almond, almond it's, blossom. It's the almond blossom yeah, time of year, which is amazing. The beautiful time yeah. of the year, yeah. It's like <laughs> we the both cherry, like it. The cherry blossom of, of Japan. Which is so or, famous in Japan. Yeah. And here in Spain, it's the almond blossom. It's quite similar, actually, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the same, same color, it's beautiful. And this is the second tree, and then there's carob, which mm -hmm. is also a, quite a, uh, you can find it a lot up there. Yeah. And then I just started, and as you said, I'm, I'm trying to get a professional. I'm getting better and better, but you need a lot of time to see your results. So when you start pruning, for example, working the land, how to treat the soil and stuff, it takes some time, and it's now my fourth year. From a perspective of a regenerative agriculture, mm -hmm. Typically in Spain, most people want the land clean, always clean, yeah, right? That's true. And can you tell us a bit about your work in Severa? The, the, the thing is that this clean land has a lot to do with, uh, with, with being effective mm -hmm. in terms of being very fast and cheap. So uh, that's why most of the people do it. And moreover, that's also true, uh, especially the elderly people, they like to see it clean. Now, if yeah. you want to show off, Ah. to show what you got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want it to be in a certain way so that other people in, in, the, in, the, in the society where you live in uh, think, oh, you're doing great. And as, as cleaner and more tidied up as the land looks, it's an image of, of being a very good mm -hmm. uh, and caring um, farmer. But as we know nowadays, <laughs> uh, hopefully more and more people understand that, this is not necessarily a sign of a healthy land or productive land yeah. or anything. It's more of a tradition that comes from the green revolution of the... Probably. Of the, of the 50s and, and 60s, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Mm, and, uh, but you mean the, uh, that, they, that they keep it clean, right? Yeah, the green revolution with... Uh, uh, with the herbicides, herbicides with, with and, all this uh, industrial and, approach yeah. that, that you can be really... It's really, of an ironic... Right. Of course, of course. Yeah, I, I just I, I remembered this, but I couldn't quite... Uh, bring it together. Uh, my approach is then uh, to do it different, obviously. Uh, I, I, I studied um, nature conservation and landscape planning and there was also, a big part of it was uh, uh, ecology. So, um, and also we learned about soil, about ecosystems and about all the plants and, and animals that work together. And that's what I'm trying to bring on the fields in the olive uh, grove in particular. This means to um, let the cover crop grow, to not uh, till mm -hmm. the soil, not like uh, open the soil. And moreover, I bring all my prunings into the ground. I don't burn it as it's the usual way. If you have a very clean ground, like, like yeah, clean as, as your kitchen soil, mm -hmm. any wood, any leaves, anything that you would by pruning it, bring on, on, on the ground, you, you cannot like chop it. A wood chipper, that's the word. You, you cannot have wood chips there mm -hmm. because it's not, it's not rotting anyway. There's no like, cover, uh, humidity, yeah, there's, not, there's nothing to rot. So it would just go dry. If you just, you're saying if you just leave the branches by themselves? If you just, if you would wood chip them mm -hmm. in, in the traditional approach, 
they were laying around and you would have to clean it up somehow. Like it, there's, there's no life in the soil, there's nothing, nothing will like decompose it. And that's why they burn it. Yeah. So also very clean. And, and what I do, as, I, as my soil is um, covered anyway with all the green uh, flora which is growing, mm -hmm. I just wood chip all my branches into the soil. Mm -hmm. And you have to put some nitro uh, nitrogen on top if you don't, which is uh, when you wood chip and you have wood in your soil, this is uh, called a nitrogen trap because oh, yeah. to decompose, to, to rot, it needs nitrogen mm -hmm. and it takes all the nitrogen which is there from rotting leaves, rotting grass, anything. And the trees will like starve a little bit. So at the same time, you have to put some nitrogen on top, which is uh, chicken manure in my case. So you, which you're are, adding more nitrogen to, to compensate for the exactly, nitrogen trap. Exactly, mm. yeah. I think some people that are maybe seeing this in, in northern countries like Germany or North America, mm. where wood chipping is, is very common and it's easy to get this resource in Spain, Mm. It's, it's not very common here and it's quite difficult to come across. Right? Yeah, to, to come across someone who, is, uh, who has the machines, mm -hmm. for example, yeah, that's true. And also, thing to find out if it's possible. Because in the beginning, I had like two types of land. Some mm -hmm. land, I, I, when I started, it was uh, full of um, cover crop anyway, because it was abandoned. So there was already something to work with. But then I also, over time, I got the confidence uh, of the farmers which are searching for younger people to give their land to, so they continued working the land. And I, when I got a, a good uh, land which was worked, it, it often was just plain soil. So when I started there and you wood chip on this plain soil, nothing happens because there's no weeds, no to give a little bit of shade and humidity mm. to start the rotting process. Yeah, there's, the, the soil isn't active. Yeah, isn't active, exactly. Yes. exactly. So, but uh, it's interesting how quick actually it recovers. Mm. Even soils which have been treated three times a year with uh, herbicide. So one year, there's one special weed. Uh, it's not a weed, one uh, plant, which is a uh, brassica sea. This is the Latin word. And, and you can even eat it. I don't know the English word, but there it is. The little white flower. Oh yes, it's like a, a wild kind of mustard, I think. Yes, 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 I don't, yes, yes, yes. I don't know the exact name. It's, it's not it. mustard, but it's close it's family from, of it's mustard. From the mustard. Yeah. Right. Well, it's quite quick and as soon as you have some greens on your soil, uh, the wood chips which are laying around there, and then when you go over it, mulching your grassland, your cover crop, everything gets mixed again and it's uh, rotting quite fast. So that was interesting to see and to experience. I had to buy all the machines myself because there was no one else having it around. Yeah, ha keeping all the energy uh, being brought by the sun, not burn it, yeah. keep it and store it in the soil. and. Uh, yeah, hopefully have a healthier soil and then have more harvest. So your land, <laughs> to be honest, it's not so abandoned. Mm -hmm. It's not abandoned at all. It's uh, in pretty good shape, right? It's in pretty good shape, that's what I want to <coughs> say. Um, because uh, when you look at the root stock, right? Yeah, the root stock. Uh, where you would graft your actual olive on top of it, uh, there, usually there's coming the shoots mm -hmm. and they're coming really fast once or twice a year, you have to take away the shoots. If you don't do it, your tree becomes a bush. Sometimes these shoots are called uh, the sucker. Suckers. So the tree obviously gets all its nutrition and energy from its roots. Mm -hmm. And that's the strongest part of, the, of a crafted tree. That's also where it's shooting mm -hmm. the strongest. In their natural state, they want to be a bush. Uh, ah, not exactly, tree, right? exactly. And it's, it's, it's perfectly fine for the tree itself. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say for the ecosystem, it's fine. Oh. It's a local plant, mm -hmm. so it's I a bush. It. For sure, it has its place in the ecosystem, but as we are talking about producing food, in this particular case, olive oil, so mm -hmm. we want a productive tree. We want the olives. And the wild part, which is the rootstock, won't produce any olives uh, or just olives as small as my nail from Pinky Finger, like yeah. very small wild olives impossible to harvest, it's impossible to work with them. So you want some pr productive olives which are growing on the... That's the variety. The variety that you want. That you want. Mm. There's varieties for olive oil. There's yeah. varieties for eatable olives. They are bigger usually. There's even a sweet olive. Did you know that? There's an oh, olive, you can pick it from the tree. Everyone who tried it... Uh, you can um, eat it right off. Yeah, on any, other, any other olive, you, you pick <laughs> it from the tree on your first uh, holiday maybe to the Mediterranean. You try, you want to try one olive, you just <laughs> see them in the supermarket, you, then you see them on the tree. You they pick look it, almost the same, right? And you, and you put it in your mouth and you just spit it out immediately because it's impossible. Mm -hmm. 
it's so bitter bitter it's extremely bitter and mm. it just sucks all your water out. but there's an olive variety over a long time they developed it um, and it's so sweet like a berry you can pick it when it's ripe put it in your mouth and it's sweet bitter just a little bit very tasty i want oh, to plant that i didn't know that but on, you only need one or two of them mm. because it's not like a productive tree mm. you will lose your productive tree your variety by abandoning the tree after a short, relatively short time. So that's why uh, your land is not so abandoned because I see uh, small shoots, maximum one to two years without working it. And also your soil, uh, there's not so, so much dominance of grass, but it's more a mixture of herbs and, and grass yeah. and, and perennial plants. And that's usually what, what you get uh, after a short time of not working the soil. All right, there we go. Julian has explained his approach to olive trees in Spain and how to regenerate the soil in his way and a few interesting facts about olive trees that maybe were new for you. If you like this kind of content, I'm going to be exploring Spain and showcasing all of these regenerative and ecological projects that pop up around the area, especially starting out here with the Valencian community, the things that are closest to me. Hopefully as I grow my channel, I can expand into all of Spain. And I think the Spanish people and are really ready for a change in agriculture. There's small projects popping up all over the place. People are motivated. There's lots of land that is, has fallen out of use and it's just ready to be put, put to use in a regenerative and sustainable way. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and follow for updates. Don't forget to watch the follow-up video where Julianne will explain how to prune olive trees and in a very in-depth way, a way that I haven't heard yet. I think it will be useful for anybody that is interested in olive trees, interested in caring for them, and for people that just have taken on new land that maybe has an abandoned olive lot or an olive grove. I think putting his knowledge to use in this kind of context can be very, very valuable to many people. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.